you know, it's 2022. We're we're a progressive state. Back now. then, it wasn't 2022. Back then, it was 1943. <laughs> <laughs> Old man Jeff. Back when we were using chisels and hammers to uh, <coughs> paperwork. <laughs> You didn't grab water, buddy. Hey, listen, I'm a grown man. These are consequences of our own actions. <laughs> These are consequences. You don't need uh, you don't need water. It's not good for you. Yeah, we're not sponsored by water. We're sponsored by Monster, dude. Exactly. I hope so. Oh, we need a card. Any card? Pick a card. Who's that? Pokemon. You know it. <laughs> oh. That's stacked to your closest to the sign. We should probably change the sign too. Yeah, this one right here. It should just be like C U P R. Just remove See that. Ya. <laughs> just take the ad out. <laughs> it's calm. I, I think I would just drop one pass. A big lump of nubs. But three. Wait, three. Most likely you're going to search it out anyways, right? So you might as well just play a pedal pad. But then you gotta find Palpat, shuffle Melanie back in, find Melanie. You know how easy that is to do it if you go Inteleon? You know how easy it is to do if you just Melanie the right spot the first time? <laughs> because you can do whatever you want. No, Calvin Connor's just. He got second. Freaking beast mode. Yeah, it still sucked to watch him get straight up donked, though. Dude, he got spit on innocently. And then he won the two morning? rounds in the top eight, so he played 17 rounds. To get to the final. To be like, Sobble, your turn. <laughs> That's so <laughs> sad. I can do my matchups. Okay. They was four little goats and three little cows. I had to wrangle them. <laughs> That's what you should do. Well, so the first like... matchup was fun wild. Whoa, easy, bucko. I got kicked. In the shin. Low kick? Pop. 20 damage? <laughs> It was one in twenty nine for sure, dude. Bruised. You spent too much on cardboard. Cardboard crack. I like Pokemon cards too much. Hey, if you guys are watching my birthday's next Thursday, so Pokemon cards. You can mail it at P.O. Box one two three, I don't know. It's a long address. I uh, know. <laughs> you got two monsters? I am fighting for my life right now, dude. <laughs> I smell and feel like bad decisions. Utter regret. Bad what? What's up, Polly? Hey, what's up? So I've been getting a lot of... I've been getting much better sleep <clears throat> here lately. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I finally got one of them sleep apnea machines. Sleep apnea? Yeah, I'm not waking up daily now anymore. Because uh, now my snore lacks. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Alright, see you guys later. I got it. Give me a second. Three, two, one, go. Thunder sir, dudes. What's going on? Island Garden TCG right here. The 13 best place to find Pokemon content. And Pokemon in general. I'm um, here. I'm Miguel. Jeff. Cam. So what's up, guys? And today we're going to go over what we normally do every week. Our weekly recap. Our local tournaments. So, who's going first? That's me. Really. Squirrely Dan. Who I, uh, play? I didn't have much time to decide what deck I wanted to play. So I went through my box and was like, what do I have the closest to? And I'm like, you know what? Palkia and Teleon was three of the top eight at Peoria, so I'm just going to play it. And Calvin Connor, this man's a mad lad. His lists are always like on the edge of like, how is he even able to play it? But he always pulls it out. He's been doing real good work at every regional so far. Um, so the only main difference is that he played a Drapion V for the Mew matchup. Just in case you go second, so you can get a good good Free attack dunker. and get that good, get good pressure out turn one. Yeah, I feel like you have to at a regional, but if you're not going to a regional, you just play it like this, right? Kind yeah. of dead card. Um, so I went ahead and swapped that for a level ball <laughs> because I'm not used to not having those level balls with the the Intellion engine, and I had two gold ones, so why not play them? There you go. <laughs> um, it's like dude, straight flexing on your opponents, dude. The the, like, the got... deck is silly. Like you, you can you can look at the meta right now and just be like, this deck does this. That's why I want to play it. And then you're like, yeah. but Polkia does it better. <laughs> like, like everything that yeah. your your advantages of playing other decks, 
you can you just think about it and you're like pocket doesn't matter that's the best energy right now with all the cards out in meta and then yeah. th we're getting more water support in the next few sets Boo. more 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 Boo. water support yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is funny because like i think palkia and Teleon has no lost origin cards besides drapion like that was the uh -huh. only like to be played at the regional they, my yeah. man literally showed up he's like oh i've been playing this already i can still play it and i'm just as good <laughs> i'm just good as i, I was think before that's why it was a good meta <clears throat> call because every other deck is still trying to find out its 60 cards yeah and palkia already had its 60 cards set yeah like in this case 59 ones. yeah <laughs> so that, yeah, like I think it already had for, the uh, optimized list yeah, that's pretty true. So, round one, I went against Danny. He was playing Mew, um, I believe. It was just a double turbo Mew, no fusion strike. Ball choice. Um, I didn't really get to see. Best choice. I didn't get to see much of the deck. He went first. Mm -hmm. He went Mew V, Oracorio, Genesect. It failed a cram. Like, just whiffed everything. It was like, R.I.P. Battle V.I.P. <laughs> I started with Sobble in the, in the active, and I... Kyle Connor pass. Uh, no. Nah. Nah. I, I think I went ear... No, I went quick ball for Greninja to concealed cards. Attach energy to Sobble, we'll keep calling. <clears throat> no, I got. I had a Palkia in play too, so like I had a Palkia. I don't remember how, but Palkia in play. Sleep. I think it was off the concealed cards. And then I kept calling, filled my bench, and went pass. Nice. Went, and then he... I think he benched another <laughs> Genesect. And got an attack in, and I drizzle, scoop up, Irida just popped off, got a good hit in, and landed path. Mm. <laughs> and uh, it's a killer. My man's didn't Both really bad. get to play a card after that. It was just he he retreated to try to protect the UV Max from a return hit because he couldn't attack again because he techno blast. Techno blast, yeah. Um, and I just had boss in hand, so I just bossed it, punched it again, and then he put up... It's a bummer. He put up Oracorio, and I went cross switcher Genesect, and then next turn just attacked whatever was an active in one. Yep, that makes your six. That's pretty good. Um, I, wonder how, I wonder how optimal his list is, because... Yeah, do you like... So is that why you play Trick and Choose in your <clears> list? I don't... I didn't play it in mine. What did you play? You played with Robophones. Um... Yes, I think the main difference was I had Ronan Phones, and I played a fifth way to bump a stadium. So I played a loss. <coughs> I played a lost vacuum. A fifth path. Yeah, so I had, I had path to Lost City, to Pokey Stops, and a vacuum. So actually, I had six ways. Um, so and then round two, I played against Lunatone Soul Rock. Tristan. That's always a fun matchup. He's back at it again. My boy. Um, back at it I again. I got off to such a good start. Like, I went I went first, I believe, and got a real good board state. I think I double Battle VAP passed, which was just kind of mighty. Um, <laughs> got set up, one one energy in the bin attached, and then he went, <laughs> I think, knock out a Sobble, and I put up, put up Greninja and went, pew. Yeah. And then... From that point on, passed for four turns in a row. <laughs> what? Because I just couldn't find anything else. Like, I didn't get to attack. Like, I couldn't find energy. I couldn't find a supporter. I was just passed. Nice. Pass, pass, high pass, noon, pass. and that was it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, I went. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> and then we, Did he we, return knock out your Greninja? Yeah. So, like, no, he was oh. he was one damage shy. He hit, oh. hit it for 110. Yeah, but you weren't able to double attach. So yeah, it didn't really so, matter. Yeah. Um, and then, so we went back and like <clears throat> after three turns of passing, I I had him down to two. Pri oh, I had to take two prizes left. So I went rock sand back into my damaged Falkia and took a knockout, hoping that those two cards wasn't energy choice belt. Yeah. And he goes energy choice belt, and I'm uh, like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I rock sand you into two cards, uh, and these are the two cards you get. Rock sand to the nuts. I'm proud of you. And buddy. so he he snuck that one out, but it was a real close game with me yeah. passing three turns in a row. Yeah, true. That's hard. That they have consistent damage output, and if you get a pass, that feels so bad. Passing once feels bad. <laughs> yeah, in any match. Yeah, if you got to do it twice, uh, it's like I'm probably gonna lose. Round two was against our uh, favorite rogue rogue guy Calvin. Mr. With Calvin. His good old Arcanine. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was not happy. He's like, this format's so bad, I hate watching my opponent just search their deck for whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty spot on Calvin. I mean, that's, that's what yeah. this deck does. It's yeah. just, what do I need right now? <clears throat> Funny lizard deck, man. I, I think I went first, one battle VAP pass. Pretty decent setup. I think double Palkia, <clears throat> two Sobbles, and a Greninja. Yeah. And he went and had uh, Galarian Growlithe inactive, two Zorua's on the bench, and Galarian Berserker. And then he did his uh, defensive position, the three attack, yeah. flipped heads, and I'm like, crap, That's I can't classic. hit the front. Yeah. <laughs> and so I went Star Portal to Greninja, Snipe, Snipe, Zorua, Zorua. <sighs> Tough. Um, That'll do it. And then he evolved, emptied his hand, got a return donk, and then I went Polkia. And then mm-hmm. he was like, good game, I don't want to play this. Yeah. I talked to him yesterday, he's like, dude, I don't know what happened. I just couldn't get what I needed. He's like, yeah, because you're you discarding got, everything away. You got Greninja. <laughs> you got Greninja. Like, Greninja just went Zoru Zoru. Like, yeah, Greninja's I don't, I don't, too good, I don't think he plays Bibril or Swablu. So like he, he, plays, he plays the Swablu. He plays the Altaria. I, don't, oh, I know, sorry, no, I know he yeah. plays Altair. Yeah, he doesn't play the base. Yeah, he yeah. So, like, base. without the Zeru, he can't get his engine going. Yeah, yeah. So, I think that's what why he couldn't get back into it, because I took out his engine. I yeah. Like, I just was like, no engine for you. Yeah. Or I'll draw your one card per turn and see if it helps you. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of a bummer. <laughs> that's kind of mean of you, buddy. That's what you gotta do. You with. gotta be, you gotta be <clears throat> savage sometimes. And then, round four was unfortunate matchup. Uh, I got to play Kaylee against her Zard deck. Oh, yeah. And so it was just... I, I flipped over Sobble going... <laughs> going first. And she, I was just attached. Got a little bit of a setup. I think a Polk... Oh, oh, no, I, no, I flipped over... I went second. I flipped over Sobble. And she had like a full bench. Popped off already. She, and she... Like, I just hear her, She's like, it's a Sobble, so it's, it's either Polkia or Kirum. Or Ice Rider, and she's just going through the list yeah. of what it could be. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, she, she's got it down. And then yeah. I go through my turn, get it down a Greninja, Sobble, and I finally land the Polkia. She goes, all oh, right, so it's Polkia, but it's probably got that Kirim in it. It's probably got that Kirim. Mm. And I'm like, the whole time I'm just like smiling. I'm like, I would Not tell quite. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just punch, 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 and weakness. Yep. And it was just real fast, but. I felt so bad that I gave her the win anyway, so I won three out of one, but I went two two on paper. Yeah, not bad. Both of our packs were buds anyway, so I was hoping that she'd get something cool. Cause yeah, get something better because she gets another pack out of it. Because like yeah. I went over my matchups, I was like, <coughs> well, my tiebreakers would be really bad, so like a difference between me winning and me losing is like irrelevant. So. Gotcha. Yeah, but it, it's cool. a real fun list. Cancel and Cologne, I didn't have to use it a single time. I think it's, it's basically... Not fun. I think it's, it's not a fun list. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> no, it's got lizard in it. That, mm-hmm. that is... this Flame. Is, I would play... Okay. I would have played Palkia and Talion if I went to Peoria. Just turn off your brain and win. The Azul system on Twitter, like... Everything's now busted and broken, so now nothing's busted or broken. No, just yeah. the lizards. Yeah, they're still pretty powerful. But, oh, yeah. You can attack with them. That's the worst part. Yeah, Aqua Bullet is kind of insane. <laughs> I was going to so, bring up this. That's cool. How do you, uh, just just a question in general. If you don't get two Palkias down and they return knock out your Palkia, how do you get back into that game? Like, you just got to feed them a... Uh, Greninja or Inteleon. What if you can't Star Portal, you just, like, have to give up a... You probably give up a Sobble, right? Because yeah. you want to use the Greninja. Yeah. You, or, I feel like, like it's still so hard to get if, back in if the game. It, if it's a match where you're, you're going to have to land a path to get back into it, then you just feed them Greninja because path stops your own Greninja. Yeah. So then Sobble is more beneficial to have than a Greninja in that point. So if you yeah. think your path is going to land, you just put up Greninja and just pray. Yeah, so if they knock out Palkia and then you put them down, they boss knock out Palkia, you just scoop, right? <laughs> They cross yeah. through you because at that point I mean, it's two prize cards, and if you set another one down, if you don't get two Palkias in the first turn, they boss. the The odds that you get two Palkias the next turn are so high because you play Irida and Drizzile. Yeah. So like, I the odds so. that you don't get two the second time. Hear okay, me out. What if they're all prized? <laughs> then you <laughs> heavy ball. You, you, like you like that's prized too. Worst possible setup. 
Um, I'm no, gonna I'm gonna curious. shout out this tweet from Celio's Network because I think it is a great explanation of why this format is so good. Um, he says we have several combination of prize card values being played to suggest success at major events right now. We have decks using as purposeful attackers <clears throat> one one Pokemon one prize Pokemon only, so Lost Box, one mm-hmm. and two prize Pokemon Tina, yeah, one two and three using Kiram, yep, two prize only Arc Gudra. And two plus three arc drought. So you have every combination of prize attackers. Yeah. And that's why this format is so healthy. Because if you want to play one prize, you can. You can play one to two prizes. You can play two prizes. You can play two to three prizes. Yeah. And I think it's just a solid explanation of why this format is such a good. Yeah, you're, you're going to hit. Yeah. In a spread of like a regional or a big tournament. Yeah, you're going to. That helps you find your line too. Because you can't always just knock out. Three prize card, three prize card, like it just doesn't work yeah. like that. I think so, it's, I think it's healthy. Yeah, I've been it. having a lot of fun in, in this format. Yeah, me is more fun than it's been before running just the double turbos. Yeah, you don't you don't you don't sound like you agree. No, I don't. I like the old GX version where you have to evolve like single prize, single prize to double prizer. Yeah, evolving into a two prizer was pretty cool. I never got to play through that, so. Yeah, it slowed the game down a lot, but it was a lot more. I, personally, for me, it was a lot more fun. Yeah, because here, no matter what, you put down a Bulky, two prizes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You put down an Arceus, two prizes. There's always gonna be a two prize prize no matter what, at the beginning, and you can only Usually, get some cheeky yeah. like cheeky knocks out throughout the bat. But comparatively to like last year. This is a lot more fun. What are the, like the tag team format? That format went yeah. so yeah. wild. We don't talk about that. <laughs> Ta- tag team was pretty fun though. Like yeah. Ultra Prism to Team Up? Yeah. So. That was like a, a fairly big variety and they all did like pretty different things. Yeah. So it was cool but they were all three prices. Oh, oh, I also saw something this week that was uh, Arceus V-Star is the high- second highest grossing deck ever. Behind my boy Zorark. Zorark GX is still number one. Oh, yeah. And it's by, yeah, like, yeah. double of what Arceus is yeah, now. Yeah, like, for sure. <laughs> yep. But Arceus is getting there. Right. Yeah, it makes anything work. And Starbirth is insane. So. All right, okay. whose matchups are next? I'll do it. El Jefe. El Jefe. Oh, I don't have a list to show. I played <laughs> Jacob's... <laughs> Cramorant deck. Didn't he call it birds? Water birds. Water birds. So it's basically do whatever you can to get four cards in a lost zone. Attack the Cramorant. That's it. He's got Articunas in there to buff it and four choice belts. Um, but it's pretty standard like lost zone. There's four comb feed, four battle VIPs, um, and then four Colorus, four boss. Does he but play Sableye? No Sableye. So no, it's just birds. No, no energy, no nothing, just Cramorant. So interesting. So does he just like top four cards of his deck, lost so I start talking? Yeah. <laughs> no, you can you just battle VIP, you get a comfy. If it, it's just like every other deck. If you get two comfies and a chorus, then you're ready to attack. So like that's kinda of the beauty of it is like if you go second you're pretty much never gonna whiff. Yeah. I think you choose to go second, right? Most of the time probably. Um because right now you're mostly playing against lost boxes or like Does my boy some, play Thornton? No. <laughs> so Buddy, the, what are you doing? Thornton kind of sounds... Put Thornton in there. Please. <laughs> that way you don't have to rely so much on the ordinary rod to get the Cramorants back. Yeah. He ended up dropping an ordinary rod for Anessa, which I didn't think was very good after playing it, but I've only played it the deck four times. But it, I never got to use Anessa effectively because you can only grab a combination of four water, four water or water Pokemon. <laughs> and he doesn't play water energy. So I can only grab Pokemon, and most of the time it was just grabbing the Cramorant's back. The cool yeah. part was that they go to your hand, Yeah. so if you need the Cramorant plus the extra 10 damage, you can grab a Cram, Articuno, whatever. So like it work, math works out that way, uh, but I think overall it's better just to grab them and put them into your deck. And then when you start your turn, because of all your switching cards, you can always start with Comfy and then yeah. look at the top two, and then if you don't don't find one, you got to play Chorus, and then you'll, just, you'll end up finding one. So I thought it was... I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a bad deck. <clears throat> I'm not sold on if it's that good. It's playing um, the Lost Engine, so I'm not a fan. It's all right. It's just super consistent. Everything's almost like four cards, which is kind of like towards 
where yeah. it's like everything is just four. So it makes more sense when you keep track of it and go. But um, round one, I played against Easton. I got bodied because I misplayed. Um, <laughs> he was playing Kiram. Kiram no Palkia. And just straight Kiram? <laughs> my man was playing four Orangaroos. Yankee, I, Yankee no brim? <laughs> Yankee no brim. I knocked out two of those orangaroos and he just kept putting them down. I'm like, bro, did you shuffle those in? I'm like, look at his discard pile. And he's like, no, I play four. I'm like, that's insane. Oh, well, <laughs> like, I got space. There's no palk in here. I'm like, okay, I guess it makes sense. And uh, <laughs> More orangaroos, more energy. Yeah. Like, my boy's probably like a orang- primate wizard. With, yeah, with, and just swapping them one car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just water every time. So like he was able to, uh, once you get two Kirims in play, like you Rangaru for like a free card, and then put one on top of the water and do it. And put one on top of the water and do it. It's so, like it's a it's a pretty effective engine. Obviously, Star Portal at one point in the time in in your game is probably better than that. But if every turn you can just put attach and put two more in play, yeah, that's pretty good. That's so funny. So like it worked well. <laughs> Um, and I was like, I know I need Manaphy in this match, but as I was sitting, I didn't have, I only had one Comfy and like one Cramorant, and I needed to be able to get to the numbers to hit. Yeah. So I ended up quick balling away the Manaphy, but I ordinarily rotted it back in the deck at the same time. Yeah. And it just never saw the card again. Um, and Playing so, hide and seek with you? Yeah, playing hide and seek. So he, he was able to Greninja and knock out the Comfies, so it took away my deck search, but I was still hitting 110 every time. I had two Articunas in play, so I was hitting 130, and I had a choice of both 160, which puts me just short of two-shotting Akiram, which I almost did. I also needed to find the Radiant Halucha. Like, I was looking for that card in Manaphy to yeah. be able to, like, get, effectively get a knockout, and I ended up Pokestopping and threw away the Halucha, and, like, what I'm like, well, there it goes. Like, I don't have a chance for a uh, return right. knockout, but... We played it out just because why not. Um, so, yeah, don't throw away your mana fee if you only have one. Even if you're going to shuffle it back in the same turn. I should have just put it down and just been a little slower. Because at the end of the game, I took out the Kyurem and I was down to one prize card. And then he took his last prize card. So, like, I still wasn't that far behind. Yeah. So, that's the benefit of playing against the V-Maxes, especially when you have the damage modifiers. Because, um, like, that's a match where Articuno really helps. Cause Cram- yeah, Kram is solid damage, but if you have Articuno's too... It's pretty good. Um, round two, played against Tracy. Um, I got to go first, popped off, had four cards, or three cards in the loss zone, because I was able to come feed, scoop up, switch card, blah, blah, blah. I was ready, set up. I went to him. He started Goon. <laughs> Wait, Tom, was he playing the he my deck? Agra, yeah. What an animal. <laughs> he started, started Goon, and he goes, like, the whole time he's looking at his hand, he's like, Jeff, this ain't good, buddy, this ain't good. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm going to fully play my turn out, because, you know, a top deck supporter, depending on what you're playing, can, like, change anything. Uh, he drew the top card, and he just, like, it was, like, less than a second. He, like, picked it up, and then he just, like, laid his whole hand up. <laughs> you remember like, what he had in his hand? Like, I'm gonna... <laughs> it was, like, a couple double turbos. Um... Like, just nothing. No, no Pokemon. No Pokemon search. Buddy. Um, Tracy, yeah, was, I'm sorry, dude. Yeah, it was supportive. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> so I was like, all right, hurry up, scoop it up, scoop it up, let's play again. I was like, this game doesn't count because it was a matter of six or seven minutes, so we just hurried up and played again. Um, it was a little bit closer. He still had, a like, a dead hand for the first two turns. But he was able to get aggro down, energy. Um, I had to catch my boy trying to scoop up Ned and Arceus and move it. Said can't can't scoop up V's and GX's, Tracy. so anybody out there thinking that can't do that. <laughs> Your EX's are safe, don't we? Yeah, the EX's are still safe. That's why shame is That's why shame is bad. Not scoop up, <laughs> not man. Not scoop up that. So we played so we played through it again, um, and we basically just played open handed because at that point I didn't care. I mean, we're just it's just there's now. Did he so. help you play your deck? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I laid. What's he laid down. It was like so. He's like, so what's my best choice here? Because his hand was pretty bad. Mm-hmm. And he only had the opportunity to like try to boss stall me. And I was like, if if I was you, I would still do it. But the deck has so many switching cards, it's probably not going to work out for you. But at this point in time, you just boss an Articuno, and hopefully I can't attack you. And so he did that. I had a switching card, whatever, and just played it out. Got all the way down to... I think he needed to take three more prizes, and then I finished off of VMAX and took my three. So... Um, he evolved it? Well, uh, he had to to stay alive, so I'm hitting 110, 110. With Articuno's buffing it, he couldn't live through two hits. 
Because Aggron's got 230. Yeah, hold on. How aggressive is this deck? How aggressive was it? The cram deck that you played. But you instantly get to hit with cram. Like, it, it's only four cards in the discard pile. Lost some. But yeah. Sorry, lost some. And you got air balloons, you got all those switching yeah, cards. So, so what is optimal, like, for that list you play? For the cram rats? Cram, it's 110. Yeah. Choice, 140. Mm-hmm. How many other tunes do you play? Two most there's, of the time. There's three in the deck, but if you get two on the bench, that puts you at... 160. 160, which... Two shots. Two shots, everything, basically. And then Halucha, with, yeah. plus 30 on V-Max. Yeah, you throw the Halucha down if you're short on a turn. If you're short on a turn with Articuno, this Halucha does help. Um, is this the new best deck in the format? Two no. shutting? No. <laughs> <laughs> it is very consistent at hitting the damage. Mm-hmm. Let's... Depending on if the if if your opponent is smart enough, you will not win. That's what I believe. It's got enough bosses and stuff to like get around things. But I think if your opponent is smart enough and they feed you the right things and like feed you a couple single prizers and like change hey, your map up. Hey, this looks nice. Won't you knock this thing out? Like some people will get tricked into like knocking out the wrong things, whatever. Or sometimes you just don't have the bosses. So I'm those people. Um, yeah. The card's highlighted. Uh, I hit it. I I don't believe you. It's I, not bad. I though. don't believe you're the person without the boss. You have the boss. You I, are the boss. You play eight bosses. I am the boss. Whoa, whoa. I play six. All right. <laughs> Four and two uh, bell pads. Did you ever do that to anybody? What? At Peoria? I tried to get everybody to I do it. I like, tried. On your first deck search, I wanted to like look through, like clearly have them know what I'm trying to grab and be like, oh. And just oh, like dude, keep I mean, going. I thought he was <laughs> just, dope. Just like kind of whisper it or like mutter it under my breath to like trick somebody. I thought it would be funny, but I didn't do it. Uh, yeah. So we got down to the end. I gave Tracy the win on that one because the game like turn two donk is just like sad. And, yeah. Um, he was playing Agron, which is like it's not great, but it's good if you play it well enough. It's tanky. Like you can get regular knockouts. So I was like, I'll let him go and play. Another, I would another win winner like, probably say Pierre's like drought on. It's not a great meta no. catch all, yeah. but you can get some wins there. You, you say no? Duraldon has the advantage of going through mill tank. Yep. Yeah, that's what you play. Canceling clone that you don't have in your yeah. list. Yeah. You exactly. take the pressure. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> round three, got to play against the greatest opponent of all time. Johnny K? Terra. Oh, Terra, let's yeah. go. I'm here about this um, She's playing Charizard still. Let's go. I love uh, that we have two Charizard. Like, y- yeah. you get paired against one of mm-hmm. the girls that both play Charizard. It's yeah. just funny. Like, yeah, it's always Charizard. For a second, I sat across from Kaylee. If like, they ever flip something else over, I'm just going to be blown away. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. sat across from Kaylee. I'm like, there's a chance that she's not playing Charizard. Yeah, with all or, the Like, I couldn't remember if it was her or everything. Terra that played Charizard, and then she flipped over yeah. Entei, and I'm like, she's they both they both do. Yeah. Um, who's the other younger girl that plays? Haley. Haley. Yeah, she's she on Sylveon. Sylveon. So yeah. yeah, you're either gonna play Charizard or Sylveon when you run into the the younger girls. Um, Terry got to go first, so she was able to get her stuff down. Um, she had Magma Basin in play. She didn't get to use it. She was like short on energy. She manually attached to the active instead, which is fine. Um, she had like three three Pokemon down. Um. <laughs> Got into my turn and just lost zone stuff. Was able to hit for 110. The benefit there is that Cram does not hit for weakness. So if she's able to evolve into the V Star and I haven't found Articunos, she'll I'll have to hit her three times. And then same with the, her V Max being 330, I think the Charizard is. Bro, it was so crazy. I got a three hit. I, I walked two. over to your guys' game and she had been like just it damage everywhere. damage everywhere. <laughs> she that, had been like, yeah. "You're not taking knockouts." Yep. Man. <laughs> every turn, every turn, I was 110 or 120 into something like yeah. whatever was there, and so she she played very well with like switching her things around. I think I think she got a little flustered. She got a little flustered because a lot of people came to watch. Yeah. Um, and so she did well with changing stuff around. Her her energy at the beginning was very, very slow. I think if she had been able to Magma Basin more, um, she would have gotten knockouts sooner. Um, so I was switching around, doing things, using Comfy, doing all the normal stuff. I kind of lost track of my switching cards, <laughs> like, towards the end of there. How many do you play? Do you know? Uh, it's like four escape ropes, four switch cards, uh, two air balloons. So, like, four scoop-ups. Four scoop-ups, yeah. So you can pretty much do 14. anything. 
Yeah, fourteen <laughs> things. Um, I I did prize Quarter a, your deck. I did prize a balloon. Yeah. Which I didn't know at the time until I played heavy ball and I had already put a balloon in the lost zone because what my choice was. Um, so yeah, we went through doing that. Um, I kind of lost track of what I was wanting to switch into. And I think at one point she like bossed an Articuno like in the front. I'm like, well, this is kind of a bummer. <laughs> um, and I was kind of draw passing for a little bit, but everything she'd like let me hit it once and then switch it. So I had like upwards of 200 damage on like the entire bench. And then she was able to suit up Charizard V Max, and it says you have to discard two energies, so she was discarding double turbos. She so just she had, double turbo yeah, she had the three fires and the double turbo to meet the energy requirement. So she'd hit me for 300, but it's 280. Um, I can't live through that. <laughs> so it knocks me out, discards the double turbo. I'm like, all right, cool. So I, I get my Kramer right back up there, but you don't get to hit for weakness. So I hit for 110. Um, she attached a double turbo, knocked me out, and I put up another one. I can only hit for 110. So like, she, at that point, she'd won the race. Yeah. Um, so she played well. She did a very good job, so she beat me. Um, keep track of your cards, people. I, didn't she deck you? Didn't you lose oh, that yes, account? that's true. She would have won on the yeah. next. I think she, she, needed, she, I think she yeah. needed two more. She needed but, yeah. two more hits. She had it all set up, yeah. but then you had... No I think I, I dug so deep because I needed to find the last Cramorant. Yeah. And I did, but then I was uh, I was able to return swing, but I had no cards left. So, yeah, yeah. she got me on that one. She came to the counter really excited. Like, I beat you up, I beat you up. I was like... It was a good game. Yeah, she sat there and she was just like <laughs> putting her cards back together. I'm like, go tell me one. She's like, yeah, I gotta do that. <laughs> she just like <laughs> went up there. So it was cool. Um... Round four, we're playing against Megan Yu, and she's still playing the Samurai. She changed it up a little bit. This is, I was talking to her, she's like, this is like her version three, so she had, she used to have Absol in there, and then now she put Absol back in, which is kind of a good attack, because it puts 10 on everything. Yep. So it just helps with making those numbers without you having to rely on the Zigzagoon or the Sharpshooting, which she still plays both of those. But it's like a third option to spread the damage to make sure Samurai always does the bonus damage. Yeah. Um, the bummer in that matchup is that Cramorant has 110 and Samurott hits for 110. So the bonus damage doesn't do anything for her. Yeah. Um, and Cramorant's not strong enough to survive one hit regardless. <laughs> so she started off pretty slow. I think she started Goon as well. Yeah. And she was able to get, like, uh, Greninja down. And she had no sobbles. I'm like, where are the lizards at? She's like, bro, this deck's killing me today. She's like, I don't even want to play this whole match. I'm like, all right, well, let's let's just get through it. And so she finally ended up getting sobbles. Um, so we were trading hits back and forth. It was a really good match. I ended up knocking out two of the Samurots. The math ended up being in my favor pretty well because Samurots only got 270. So swinging with Kramer at 110, a couple Articunos. 130 and then i just need a belt or a third articuno which end up getting one off the prizes so i hit for like 110 on something small found the third uh articuno so the next turn i knew i could boss and hit the 140 to make make the numbers um so it came down to her knocking me out she made a really good play with goon ping and then absol and knocked out my last kramer amp. yeah and there was one more on my deck and i had three cards one, two, three, four. I had five cards in my deck. And one of them was a cram. <laughs> and I, with my switching cards and stuff, I knew I could make it. So I put Comfy up, looked at the two, didn't find it, just grabbed one, didn't matter. Was able to retreat with the air balloon, grab the next two, one there. Last but, card. But yeah, but I kept the Colrus. And yeah. you can play Colrus as long as you have cards in your deck. Um, so I played Colrus just to grab the last cram ramp, put it down, switch cart, and then knocked out the Absol, because Absol has 110. Yeah. So that math worked out for me. If it hadn't been anything else, uh, I wouldn't have been able to play Colrus and Boss in the same turn, so I would have lost on the last card, but I drew the whole deck out again. Um, How so sweaty did you get? One. How sweaty? No, that's your last card, dude. No, I was I was mapping it the whole time. I was like, I know I can see all five of these. Yeah. So I, like, I was like, hopefully I just find cram ramp early but i was like i have i had a whole grip of like 13 14 cards so um i was pretty sure i could get there so yeah some might say a full grip games (laughs) please sponsor us yeah we're right here every week Um, we we know you're watching you're following (laughs) (laughs) so that was the fourth round uh me giving the win to tracy just put me at uh the only win i had was against megan last round so that's 2-2 two, two, technically but um 
Cram seems pretty good. Jacob threw it all together. I don't know what the inspiration was from, uh, but the birds definitely help. Um, it's super consistent on just doing 110 damage on your first turn, and like that's pretty powerful. But all the yeah. other Lost Zone boxes pretty much do the same thing, and they just have more options for later. So I don't Radiant know if it's good or bad. Zard. Radiant Zard's good. I still need to buy one. There you do. Yep. I need to give you yours back. The one I ordered, I finally went and checked, and they were like, yeah, sorry, we didn't have one, and we refunded you. I'm like, oh, cool. Cool. I Thanks. was waiting for like a whole week. I don't need mine. I also I'm bought... just saying, I, have, I bought another yeah, one, yeah. so I can give you yours back, but uh, I was waiting on the one that showed up and show up, so. I'm not I also bought 20 cross witchers. Did you? Yeah. I bought 12. <laughs> Bro, I was, <laughs> go, I was deck building yesterday. I was like, why does every deck have four cost switches? I don't want to yeah. like, take them out. Yeah. I was on that train first. I was on that train first. All right, <laughs> it's 2022. Uh, you do what you want to do. What What was the first deck we looked at? We saw like Omnipokes, and we were both like... Ice Rider and Telium. Yeah, we were like, bro, that thing's got cross switchers in it. And then we were both kind of like, mm, doesn't seem that good. But here it is, just like... Alright, yeah. plus Crush Witcher, plus Lizard, pretty good. Or yeah. Ir- Irida plus Lizard, pretty good. No, as soon as, so. as, like, I didn't know what the card did when I first looked at that list. Yeah. And then I read it, I'm like, bro, this is Guzma. <laughs> yeah, Guzma on a card. An item. And I'm like, deal. What man. other card had two parts that you had to play? Um, there was quite a few of them. There was yeah. Custom Catchers. Custom Catchers, and then there was the Clovers. The Missing Clovers, or Lucky Clovers, or whatever. Those were... Oh, oh, oh. prizes? Yeah, those were something to do with prize cards. Um, there was the healing card that if you played two, it healed more or something like that. I yeah. Don't know what it was. And then oh, there oh. was uh, Puzzle of Time. Puzzle, Puzzle of time. time. That's the one I'm thinking about. And then what was Custom Catcher? Custom Catcher had t- had a, a good benefit of just playing one. Custom it Catcher was, was draw until you had three. Draw a card. I think it was play draw, one, draw a card. Draw until you had three cards in your hand, I think. Yeah, something like something like that. And so you could draw, you could play it for three. Uh, but if you, or played, if you two, played two, it was... Or if you played two, you boss. It was Google? just a... I don't think you had to switch. Cause I think I think you had to be behind in prizes, and then, yeah. it, was, and then it was a boss. I think there was two stipulations on it, but know. you had to play two. Yeah. Um, so here in this new like cross switcher, my mind was like that. I was like, this is bad. Yeah, you should not play this card. You have to play two of them to get any kind of benefit, and then now look at us ordering yeah. twenty. And then yep. now, now uh, we also have cross receiver. A lot of people forget about that. Yeah, true. Cross receiver is just. I've uh, looked at that card a bunch of times. It's just grab a support and put it back on top of your deck, I or think put so. it in your hand. Well, we're sitting in front of a computer. Actually, we're sitting in front of a smartphone. I, I know it's play two, word. interact with supporter and discard. Put it somewhere. Shining, shimmering, splendid. Over silence. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> on this magic cop and ride a whole new world. <laughs> you know it. It's Aladdin. Come on, come on now. You know what you're Aladdin? I have, but I don't remember it very well. Buddy, come on, dude. What's his name? Cross receiver. Yeah. You just assume his gender? Yeah, you definitely did. Bro, what? Sorry. You spelled with one S? <laughs> I don't know. Cruz? I think it's got a hyphen. <laughs> Cross hyphen receiver. Here, cross hyphen. Papa, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. All right, cross receiver doesn't exist. Yes, it does. Just Just type in cross. Are you sure it's cross? Yes. My light's on. Bro. I was going to tell you that earlier. Oh. Technical difficulties. <laughs> if I didn't close Pokemon, I'd have found it faster. My coworker sent me a snap saying, I'm alive. All right, I'm done looking. But it's I feel no like I shouldn't face. be. <laughs> it's Crossiever. Ah, okay. What's it do? Crossiever. Crossiever. You must play two Crossievers at once. Put a Pokemon or supporter card from your discard pile into your hand. That's not horrible, actually. I didn't know it was Pokemon or supporter. I didn't know you had to play two at one time because that's how unfamiliar I am with that card. Miles, is that a real card? Cross- Put it down in the comments. <laughs> Cross Seaver. <laughs> Cross Seaver. I think at first, I think the very original Mew list had Cross Switchers in it because it was mm-hmm. that was back before. Because it said Fusion Strike on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and that was back before all Mew the. Mew players were like Fusion Strike. That sounds good. Synergy? Yeah. It says Synergy on it. Yeah. 
Oh, buddy. Bro, if I play two cross receivers, does that, do I get to Genesec for more? <laughs> yeah, if you put a Genesec back in your hand and put it down. There's two <laughs> more cards in your hand. Could you imagine if it was how many Fusion Strike cards you played this turn? That'd be nuts. It'd be worse, actually. So, yeah, late game or early, oh, early game for sure. It'd be worse. Battle VAP Pass, Quick Ball, Ultra Ball, none of those have... None of those are Fusion Strike. Hear me out. You don't play any of that. Ah. Uh. Just all Fusion Strike. You play 40 Oxes. And Cross Receivers? Yes. And Cross Switchers? Cross Switchers and Power Tablets. Mm-hmm. Power Tablets. And That's Elsa's. It. Elsa is Fusion, yeah. Oh. There you go. That's the new me. Somebody build it. Run it. I'm actually. not, but you can. <laughs> now we're going to who's? That. Pokemon! All right, what we got? Sorry we skipped it at the beginning. We got a little ahead of ourselves. But, hey, it's here. Hopefully you stick around this long. You get a chance to win the card plus a pack of Brilliant Stars if you're the first one to comment the correct Pokemon. Let's hear it. All right. This Pokemon, it stores static electricity in its fur for discharging. It gives off sparks if a storm approaches. How big is he? Oh, he's a chunker. He uh, doesn't say. Bro, did you just assume his gender? <laughs> So that was bad. a pretty cool description, though. I like that one. Yeah, it doesn't have what. Are you good? It's in the border. It what? is two foot and thirty three point five pounds. It's in the border on the butt, right underneath the right underneath picture. The picture. Oh, bro, I can't read that. Are you kidding me? Well, that's why <laughs> yes. we have Cameron here. All right, thanks, Bob. And Josh started the trend of us signing the card, so we will also sign it before we give it away. I'll try to make my signature look better than the one on Josh. So that means that Tracy good. and Daniel. Daniel. Next time you guys come to the shop, bring those cards with you. And you or Jordan, if Jordan wants to sign. Yeah, if Jordan or Jordan Blankman bring it to me at basketball, we'll sign yours too. We? Oui? I mean, I'll he'll bring it to me. I'll sign it and bring it to you guys. I'll take it back. Okay, that's, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not playing basketball, dude. You should. I got bad knees. We got football today. <sighs> we playing football? I'm not. Why he's, not? He's playing games with the dead. I'm going to spend time Bring with Bring Chad. Pops. Chad Ochocinco. Bro. Run a slant route, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> I could only imagine my dad running. All right, he, so, used, he used to do like track and stuff, actually. That's the key words there, is used to. 1943. Once you stop, can't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> like before he's gone, I just start running. All right, now we're going to go over... Some top eights. Peoria finalists here. That's pretty cool. So the top eights. Unfortunately. List uh, here. Um, if you haven't heard, toward one. Woot uh, woot. Spoilers, what? He's kind of a machine. He's kind uh, of my favorite player. Lost Box, Sableye, Radiant Charizard. Uh, Calvin Connor, your boy got a second. Pac and uh, Yoshi, that's how you say it. I, mm-hmm. I actually got yeah. to talk to him. He was... Uh, I love this dude. He pulled off a nasty play where he had like 20 cards left in deck and he had to find boss and he primate wisdom and it was the top card. (laughs) And I bumped into him like shopping at the stores and I was like, bro, (laughs) that was the craziest thing I've ever watched. I was like, how many cards do you have left in your deck for that boss? He's like, I don't know, but it was a sickening amount. (laughs) He was like, I should not have won that game. I actually think I've sat next to him before. I don't remember like... I don't remember, like, because I, I saw him on stream because I wasn't there, so I was watching the stream. Yeah. I saw him on stream, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I sat next to that guy at yeah. one of the regionals. He's a pretty cool, chill guy. Like, he's just there playing Pokemon. Like, oh, yeah. he's not super I... serious about it. He's just kind of like, he's a he's a, a crowd favorite is what they always describe him as, but he's a little bit older of a guy, which is kind of unusual to see. <laughs> um, he's, out there, he's out there cashing checks, man. So Yo, Yoshi, you're my hero. Yoshi playing Kira and Palkia. Um, a the, wild list, the, too. Yeah, one of the, we'll go over it here in a little bit, but he's got some spicy things in there. And then we had Zachary playing Kira and Palkia as well. And then we had Andrew playing Palkinteleon, another Palkinteleon from Angel. And then John Ang, my boy, was sitting at table one basically all day of day one. He was just taking names, too, um, playing Lost Tina. Box Giratina. Um, he was the only Tina to get up there. And then here is the crazy part of the, the event here, old eighth place. Osvaldo got up in there with Hisuian Zorark. So I think we're going to look at that one first because I don't think anybody saw this one coming. And then when you look at the Pokemon count, 
it's not quite what you would expect it to be. I would have figured there'd be like four Gengars, um, all that kind of stuff. So, this is actually the list that, um, who was it, Josh and Damien play. Did they, had they already built it like that? Yeah, they since built it. they saw so, it or beforehand? Because I had played what you said, like four Gengars, whatever, a very yeah. heavy set. And yeah. it was very clunky. That's why I didn't like it. Yep. But they showed me their list, which is basically one for one. Yeah. So it's on the 4-4 line because you got to find them. Uh, you get two gro- two Crobats because your turn one, you just have to pop off. And I think uh, the damage I put on Zorak can be upwards of 300. So you got to sit with that liability on your bench sometimes. You play the two Gengars, you can pull those out of your discard pile at any time and put them on your bench. It puts three damage counters on it, so it helps with your output. You gotta play Dunsparce because <coughs> Zorark is normal type, which is kind of weird Thanks. for people to see, but it's a Suyan. So, um, yeah, you gotta play the Dunsparce. You got a Manaphy for the spread, a Rangaroo. Um, help. Not sure why you that, need that it, helps but with Mar- against Marnie Path, Path Marnie. So if you okay. if you are primate wisdom something good on top of your deck, if you see the path, the Marnie coming, then you guarantee you have something for next turn. True. Um, That's true. Yeah. What? That blew my mind. What? Yeah. Yeah. If you That's know so if you know good. Marnie's coming, you just primate wisdom something for next turn. Like put a supporter on top. Like, and like then, an evolution you instance if you're playing Inteleon yeah. or something along the lines. You don't yeah, always have to put like something you don't right? want. There we go. That's better. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's a good idea. So I I don't think I would have thought about it. Also, <laughs> what? what? His mind's blown. Yeah. So <laughs> well, also in Tord's list, he plays an Orangaroo for the simple fact your hand gets full of junk. What do you yeah, do? That? And, and then, and then, then you primate wisdom a card, selecting. and then you flower select, and so you automatically just get rid of a junk card. So like, um, yeah. See, I am that's pretty so good bad too. at this game, dude. <laughs> that's pretty good too. So. Yeah, the, oh, um, the one Diancy, so you can protect the bench for a little bit if you have to. It seems pretty good. There are a lot of escape ropes right now and a lot of cross switchers, so I think just the one Diancy was probably the best call. And then everybody knew there's going to be a lot of Kyrams. So if you have your double turbo and a full bench with Zorark, it's 280 damage. And yep. then the Halucha puts you at 310. But choice on and that then if boy. you have the choice belt. You're getting Kyrams. Yeah, so, so I, I heard cool. on the stream that the Kyrum pocket was like 24% of the, de- the room in day yeah. one. Oh, that's awkward. I didn't see a single one. I played two. Like, <laughs> must be nice. That's crazy. Yeah. So, uh, and then I would I would not have thought of Sharon's care, I don't think, uh, because every time I think of Zorak, I don't think of it being a normal type, so I just com- I just completely forget about that. Um, it plays two big parasol because you got to protect the bench. Um, from the Sableyes because you're already you're already leaving damage there mm-hmm. for your output, um, so that's also great. Also helps into Tina. Yep, and then oh, you play the, play, play the four stadiums so you can bump it all, um, and then you just need it for the damage. Um, yeah, and then the yeah. Then it also like, helps kind of with numbers, damage. ironically. Yeah, it will. Like it also can help with numbers. <clears throat> so. If they if it's in play and they put something down, you're getting twenty on their Pokemon as well. So. Yeah, it makes it easier to hit things, especially because that's an even number, and your choice belt turns it into an odd number, and then the amount of Pokemon you have is even or odd, so it definitely helps with hitting the correct number. So, um, super cool. I think uh, that was not expected at all in Peoria to make it I think it we should go over eight. number nine, too, because I think he bubbled out and it's Reggie's, which is yes. kind of cool. That uh, a lot of... He was in a round, and it was a long game, and they uh-huh. tied. And, yeah, and neither it. one of them wanted to scoop to the other because they both were kind of on the bubble, but the tie really just hurt them both, and neither player wanted to like it was get such a the game. Like they so, both played so well. Yeah, they did. It was so fun to watch. Um, so yeah, Gigas pretty straightforward. Uh, nobody's making this mistake of playing one Reggie Ice this time. Um, oh no, it was one Reggie tur- Steel. Reggie Steel. What they were playing. So a couple tournaments ago, or maybe a couple in a row, they were only playing one of one of the Reggies, Lost, which is a little Lost risky. Lost City came out and so like, yeah. nope, can't do that so no since, more. Yeah, since Lost City exists, and um, people bumped up a three Reggie Gigas most. Yep, because your number one threat is that, especially with all the V Maxes in the room. Um, and if you lost City one or two of those, that's why you're playing the third. You gotta be able to get it off. Well, yeah, and then also I saw a few. You, you have a bunch of squirrels outside your tree, and they're playing tag. It's kind of cute. Oh. I also saw a few. Those are squovits out few, there. Um, <laughs> that's right, that's right, my bad. <laughs> few Reggie lists playing the one off of the Reggie Dragon you used to play. So they played three Reggie yeah. Dragos too. Mm-hmm. 
Yep, I saw I saw a bunch like that. Yeah, um, you really want the you really want the other ones for the card draw, um, but the other one hits two eighty, hits yeah, really hard. So hard. if you have a little bit of splash from the Reggie Lecky or the Choice Belt, well, they don't do they play Choice? Yeah, they play Choice Belt. So you're hitting three ten. So it seems pretty good. Back. It's real Reggie's is cool. Uh, nothing else in it was like ex- exceptionally weird or or uh, any any techie cards really. It's Gift Energy was new. That's, yeah, that get, was a okay. pretty good inclusion. Yeah, to gift energy was new. So if you get knocked out, you draw cards so you have if, seven. If, it's if you get attacked, I think, right? If this Pokemon's card statue is knocked out oh, by okay. damage, people have been just playing it so you have for seven. some reason. Yeah, dude, if all you had to do is get damaged and you draw seven cards, like that'd be nuts. Everybody yeah. would play it. Um. So yeah, nothing outstanding in the list besides for that. Um, I think Reggie's is pretty big brain. You really got to be like. Every turn, you got to be in the zone. I feel like because I just like there's so many little pieces that you have to make sure is there. And if your opponent plays really well, it's just even harder for you. I think it's hard to play into a good player, but it's the easiest deck to just go. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's kind of what I meant by like if you're at a regional. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but like if you're looking for a cheap deck to get into playing, I think Reggie's is a good choice. Yep. Because it's pretty linear. You don't have to think about oh, what am I going to do this turn? For sure. Like, Plus, look at this right there. Yeah, forty five bucks for the whole deck. So, yeah. And then like wow. and then nice. it can hit weakness. Like yep. on almost everything. So then we'll go into John Ings, which I I loved watching him play. He just uh he's, he's real good. Yeah. I he's don't think I don't think I've ever seen him before, so like me walking around, he just kinda looked like a normal dude, whatever, and then I just like in passing, I'm like, man, this guy's sitting at the in the number one spot again. And like after every round, he was still in the first chair. Yeah. And he had, he played Mahomes in the first chair and beat him up there. So I was like, all right, this guy's pretty serious. Um, yeah, super cool. He plays the two two Giratina, and then it's pretty straightforward from there. But a lot of these Giratina lists chose not to play the Sableye. But I think it gives you so much late game potential to clean something up if they just I think what's boss knock out your biggest. He plays Snorlax. Yeah, the Snorlax is Snorlax is very good because you are playing, um, or most decks have a Luminion that they have to rely on sometimes, or a Crobat, and then Snorlax is just 180 for just three energies, which is insane. So you get to do Mirage Gate, and there you go. So, you got two bosses. You play late game, the Roxanne, um, try to slow your opponent down, um, usually is, is enough to get you back into it. Um, but yeah, you really just want to get to the point where you can use Mirage Gates and clean step up with Greninja, or uh, early game, Drapion, if you play against Muse. Um, what I like about this deck is that there's yeah. a lot of pivot points. Like, you can, because you can play Giratina, or you can yeah. play the Lost Box, or you can just play Drapion. Yeah, there's some matches where you just don't even... Just don't yeah. use the gear John, right John Ng versus Tor, that was a fun one to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was just an unfortunate matchup because John Ng knew that he had to play just Lost Box, mm-hmm. but Tor was playing Lost Box. Yeah. yeah. So like they were just back and forth, such an intense match. Yeah. And then it was like, fun to watch for sure. Finally, Zard was open, and John didn't have a way to one hit the Zard. Yeah. And so that's what helped the prize math for Tor to the finally trade. sneak it out. And I'm. I'm sitting yeah. at Miles' reception just watching this match so freaking yeah. intent, intently. And then Miles kept walking yeah. by and go, how's it going? Yeah. And then I would give him an update <laughs> on the game. Yeah, yeah pretty cool. <laughs> uh, the the one questionable cool. thing to me was the no Thornton. Um, because late game, you definitely could just pull out a Giratina out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, you just Mirage Gate to your Snorlax, and they're like, all right, well, I guess the Snorlax is coming. I'll deal with that when it comes to the active, or, like, you know, whatever. Okay. And just... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thornton Giratina. <laughs> Boom. No, yeah. the, the biggest notable play yeah. is that he kept lost sending his pieces to Giratina instead of discarding him, mm-hmm. because he knew that Tord played one Echoing Horn. So uh, instead of discarding so his Giratinas, could, yeah. he, he lost on him. Yeah, that's pretty smart. That's pretty big thing. Yeah, that way you can't throw on the bench and then say, sorry. Cross with your pop-pop. Yep. So, yeah, he played great. He was super fun to watch. Um, you got Palkia and Teleons here. I'm assuming most of them are probably pretty close to the same. So That's your, that's your pretty standard build. But yeah, 4 3 Spicy two, one, one is the one we've already went up. Oh, yep. this one plays one three, quick three. shooting. Yeah. That's interesting. I don't know what math they uh, they think that helps. Other Hey Jeff, notice that there's two Melanies in that list. Other Palkias. And right? 
Because you're, you're always going to hit 260 if you're both full and you only play the one choice. He doesn't, uh, they don't play Leon, that's the problem. That's why I play That's why there's two Melanies. <laughs> and a quick shooting. <laughs> well, that's, that, that's, that's, that's why there's three Inteleons. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a lot. No. So That's I mean, I think mm-hmm. yeah, you either go one of two ways. This is one of them, right? And then this is this is the incorrect. Way. Nothing super special about this. There are no <laughs> a board made top eight. There are no new can't cards in this either. So I wouldn't play it, but you can't hate it. Yep. And then you got another Palky and Tell right there at fifth, and they are four three one one. So they only have one shady dealer. Mm-hmm. They're also on the one Melanie. Um, yeah. Nothing super Wild. special about this one either. Um, it's just consistent. It's good. 3-3 Palkia. I think a lot of people were playing... Uh, like, initially were playing less Palkia. Like, less thick. Because you had space for so many more things. Whoa. It'll get you on the, on, the, on the post. Get me on the post. You'll see it in post. What were you doing, Timmy? Nothing. I can see it all right here, so I'm not know why I'm not paying attention. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Dad. So, Kieran Palkia. What was this at? Fourth place. 3-3 um, three, three line. Pretty thick on the Palkia. This guy only plays the 1-1 one, one V-Star, which is, like, super sketchy, I feel like. Do you think it should be a 2-2-2-2 two, 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 two line? Nope. I think, I think it's 1-1. One, one. I think it's kind of sketch if the boss knock it out. Your star portal is just out of the out of the room, and then you don't get to use Greninja. So like Greninja just wins you so many games. You can still cure him to your Greninja. You don't yeah, need but star, ta- star portal is nice to have, but you don't need it. Well, it takes less turns. I don't know. I think the one one's a little a little whack, but obviously this guy got fourth place. So my guy said, back in my day, we star polled everything. Yeah, I I would I would play a Thornton in mine. Yep, Thornton seems pretty good. Um, yeah, there was nothing super crazy about that one. Yoshi's list was the one that had a little bit different of a setup. This guy's wild. I love him. Yeah. So he was opting to play 3-3, three, 2-2. Three, two, two. He's got the two Orangaroos. Um, just one on Polion. You know, that's pretty standard. Bro, the spiciest part about that is the Cheryl. The spiciest part is the Cheryl, but also no. two, two cross switchers. My boy said. <laughs> yeah. So you got to throw one away early, or if you prize one, I mean, you're you're Dead eventually going to find it. But, but they also played um, the Lost City for A, the Lost yeah. Box deck, and B, Reggie's. Yep. Yeah, it's def- you definitely need it against the Reggie's, and I feel like that deck was definitely strong enough just because of the HP, and then you... One <clears throat> VIP pass, kind one of switch. Against. One energy retrieval. Yep. Put two in your hand. That's pretty typical. It's up to, to two, play I one. think. I got it. Oh, is it put up to? Oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> so you don't have to put two? No, just one. You can like energy recycler? You can play if there's only one. <laughs> yeah. What about zero? No. You cannot. <laughs> okay, so it's either one or two. Yeah. It's up to two. All right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Another tattoo. <laughs> up to. So, yeah, that was the spice on his uh, second place. We basically went over. Uh, Cameron played it. The only difference for him, because he's playing at locals, he took out the Drapion and, and doubled up on the level balls, because uh, it didn't really it doesn't really matter for where where we're at. So, and then your number one list here is Old Tord playing the Lost Zone box, and even this is not that expensive. It's a hundred bucks and thirty dollars of that's the Charizard. Yeah, the Charizard. So you're yeah. you can build it all for sixty bucks basically. And so, scoop up that's the other half. Yeah, <laughs> they are pretty. And Battle VIP Pass is spiked recently too. Yeah, those are, those are all up. So. Yeah, I, I think he did. Too. I think he did the best just because he's big brain and he plays four Colrus, which is standard. But he's got four everything, like four VIP, four Fog Crystal, four Cross, which are four Net, four Cart, four Escape Rope, three Vacuum, which is pretty cool because you can just vacuum your own stuff early on to make sure you never miss the Cramorant. Or turn two, it almost guarantees that you get to use Sableye, um, and you play the four Path, so you can really just blow your own path away, put another one down or get rid of one of your own air balloons, and then, therefore, the card you discard plus the card you're discarding in play, if it's on your board, then you're putting two in the loss zone as opposed to just the one if you're going to discard your opponent's item or tool or stadium, but obviously it's very good to do that as well. Um, Just super consistent, four fire, two... Why'd you go away? Sorry, four psychic, two fire, it's pretty standard. Um, 
Don't go far. So, yeah. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Homeboy is yawning really I aggressively, you, so I've been sticking my finger down his throat. Uh, this. <laughs> so he's been. This time I lean right over. So where are you going? <laughs> Get over here. I got you. I got you. So yeah, there's your winning list there. Uh, there was quite a few people already talking about it at our shop, and a lot of people have built it already. So yeah, probably gonna run to a bunch of lost boxes here in, at our locals. Perfect then, time for some dragon bolt. Yeah. <sighs> Or play your own Lost Box, because Sableye is just as good. Lost Box, Dragon Bolt. Gotcha. Put that monstrosity back together. I might. So I can't find the... Build Reggie's. I cannot and find. put in the Kyogre. That too. That Thornton Kyogre. Yeah. And just 100. Also, a lot of people were playing the Amazing Rare Raikou. It was 120 up front and back? Yeah, it's a 120, 120 snipe. And then other people were playing... <sighs> Need it all? There was another, well, yeah, people were playing that, but that was like a spice for Reggie's. There was something else in the Lost Boxes that they were able to Mirage Gate to. Um, I don't know, it seems weird, because I know Miles has tried it, but like, Retro Ram just sounds so good. What does it do, Kim? Three energies for 270. Do 30 to yourself, I think. Yeah. Kind of so irrelevant. 300, good choice. They're going to get one prize. You probably, hopefully, get three prizes. Two prizes, man. Not, not with just three hundred, but yeah. But if you if you can, halucha. Yeah, play halucha, or if you play it like a regular lost box and maybe throw the sableyes in there, but then you're asking for four types me, of energy, so a, I don't know if it's go, possible. Go, 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 Moltres. All that bump stamps like that. Yeah. Um, I think the last list I saw that was like pretty much based towards amazing rare rush ram had uh two Moltres in there, I think. Yeah, too. But you don't really need one because your most important thing is like 310 for a Mew, I guess. So you really just want to buff it once for 280 choice build 310. If you're playing Lost on, you already have Sableye, so I feel like Sableye fixes your numbers already. Yeah, the the decks with the Mazer and Rush Ram, though, don't play Sableye because then, then you got to play four different types of energy. You play Mirage, okay, don't, don't matter. Don't matter. You already play in the water, you got to play Electric, and then you got to play Fire, so. Plus you, Psychic. Ugh. Play an Aurora. You could, but you gotta attach that from hand, so it makes it a little weirder. And you gotta discard stuff. So it doesn't yeah. feature engine. <laughs> that was the top eight. Pretty spicy list. A uh, couple things. Or there was a couple of decks there that was just like, didn't think they'd make it. So it was pretty cool. Um, definitely expected to see a Mew there. I think the closest Mew was 14th. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, he just barely missed it. So my predictions was Mew was going to win it. Yep, that's what I thought I thought there well. was going to be a dog in top eight. Yep. Um, I knew there was going to be at least a Palkia in top four. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I don't remember what my other one was. But I my, thought mine it. was pretty close to Zach Lasager's prediction. I thought a dog was going to sneak in there, too. Cause I, I thought think, it was definitely going to be I think it was eight. just... It was just risky enough nobody wanted to play it for 15 rounds and, like, try to get there. Bro, when it, and when it goes, it goes. Yeah, especially if you play the Lost Box version. Yeah, Megan built it in some time. Yeah, she it. played I was sitting next to her yesterday. She was playing it. I played it online a few times, too. Um, I like it because it can just do crazy Greninja things, and then you also get a free turn if you play it right. I've, um, I've been trying to get her to play Metachan Thornton. <clears throat> yeah. Because if you too. set it up, you get to Yoga Loop, take an extra turn. Thornton and the Dialga, the V-Star taking extra turns. My boy's like, oh, oh, extra yeah, turns. three turns. Yeah. That's cool, dude. It's, it's fine. It's, it's a cheap mic. <laughs> Just whack into it. It is now. It's 10 years old. It is actually pretty old. <laughs> yeah, that'd be spicy. Uh, but, like, yeah, I think that's too many rounds for, like, somebody to just, like, full risk it on that. So. <sighs> I don't know. The, on the other hand, though. I don't know why I said that. I played Agron. Yeah. That's not meta at all. I mean, you did better than me, so. You did better than me. For wins, yeah. You did better than Cameron. Dialga seems fun, though. Yeah. I think on the other hand of the Dialga as well, like, if you play that for, like, f three, four turns, and you just aren't hitting the right cards, it's like, well, I'm scooping right now. It's so, like, you, you get to save a lot of time, because if it just doesn't do... That's what we need to tell Alec to play, so he doesn't drop tie anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My boy has the worst luck that. ever. <clears throat> I don't think it's necessarily that. We were talk I talked to him yesterday after we left the 
shop or Thursday, whatever. Um, and he was like, "Yeah, I think I'm just gonna build this." Blah blah blah. I was like, "You don't want to do that." I was like. I was like, you want to work harder. You want to outplay people. He's like, yeah, you know me too well. He's like, that's why I played Lost Zone Gudra. It was not good. <laughs> <laughs> that's why the Arceus Gudras did better because it's just more consistent, more like you just almost always turn two or turn three Gudra, and then you're reducing the damage. The Lost Zone box was harder to make it work, but you had the spicy Thornton plays, which he got to pull off. So when you get to do a play like that, it makes you feel a whole lot better. Even though maybe it's like it's just like it's so hard to get to there, but when you do it, it's pretty cool. I love so. clearing your bench with Thornton. So if you only have Gudra and active, you can yeah. like if they have damage on, let's say another Gudra, you can Thornton into a Comfy to kill it. Yeah, and give him a press card, and you're like, here's my Gudra, answer it. <laughs> yeah, well you can't do it when it's a V star, right? You can only go basic for basic. Yeah. So, so okay, maybe I'm an idiot. Why do you play Gudra with the Lost Box? Mirage Gate. Mirage Gates. And then the possibility Fantina. of Fantina. That seems bad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not bad, but also then you get to play it with Cram. And, like, Cram is just free 110 damage. And then your your hope is that when you finally get the Guja ready, it's or whatever you're hitting already had 110 on it. And then you're getting the first knock with your big guy. So you're hitting 200 at a total being 310, and then you also reduce the damage coming back to you. So yeah, but you, to why. get that, you have to, like... Fantina's, like, what, 10 cards in your discard? Mm-hmm. You don't know... I don't know. I just... I don't want to lose Well, regardless, you're reducing 80 just from attacking. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I don't know. And also, the Radiant Gardevoir might have been better, but in the Lost box, you want to draw more cards, so you have to use Screen Engine. You have to conceal cards. I feel like you're doing so. too much for the same outcome. I think the Arceus build is just better in general. Yeah, and a lot of people went away from Arceus because, like, it's kind of boring. But it's super consistent. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> a little power struggle right here. Yeah. For you not noticing. Alright, well. So anything else we want to go over? Talk about? Any special notes? Um, We're definitely going to plan on going to... Dallas? That's Arlington, but I think we're skip. I think most people are skipping that one because it's, it's, it's right before Christmas. Um, these are just for the day two events. So the one in February is Knoxville. So we're all oh. going to plan to go to Knoxville. I plan on starting my run in January. After January, I think I'm going to almost every one. Made by day two or made by or all of them? All of them. All of, <laughs> That's going to be so many regionals. Yes. I mean, Salt Lake's happening today, right? Yeah. That's yeah. next weekend, isn't it? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it might be next weekend. I think it's next weekend. It's next weekend. I don't think. Oh yeah, because it's my birthday weekend. Yeah, I don't yeah, think. Yeah. I don't think they're ever back to back. I don't think they ever do back to back regionals. No, it's usually so a week between them. Travel. Yeah, I might go. You ain't going one. to every one of them. You know how many there's gonna be. I'm going to a lot of them. You're going to the big ones, like the day two ones that we're talking about. The company day two. So yeah, I think everybody like we're gonna, we're we're gonna plan early, get a hotel, get everybody in the same place, and do Milwaukee. Um. Yeah, first one though is gonna be I Knoxville. Don't, I don't so. want to go back to Milwaukee. I love Milwaukee. I want to go back to Peoria. I will why. move to Milwaukee. Why? Big Al's. Big Al's. <laughs> Let me tell you about Big Al's. Bro, you, guys, you guys took Big L's. <laughs> we took Big L's because we, we wanted to go to Big Al's. We could have went and got some big T's. Made it all feel better. All big W's there, bud. <laughs> <laughs> so this episode is sponsored by Big Al's. Big L's. Um, I can't find anything family appropriate that you want to. But seven, seven cent beers. Seven cent beers. Seven open at four nights. o'clock p.m. To four a.m. To four a.m. You can probably put it together and figure out what kind of place that is. Sorry, mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what else are we doing today? Is that it? Is that it? We're going to our fundraiser thing today. Our fundraiser. That's another video, right? Yeah. Well, stay tuned, guys. We'll go over that to see how that goes. It's going to be our first teaching experience of uh, trying to teach the youth how to play. So it'll be fun. And how to spot fakes, because that is important. Gotcha. Yeah. Important for trades when you're little. Every kid just wants to trade. Don't trade your fakes to kids. All right, guys. We're done.